And it started as a small movement up here where people could voice their opinion by actually physically getting in the water and, and seeing how beautiful the scenery is and watching eagles soar by and animals come into the water. And so many people don't get that chance anymore, dip into the, into the natural environment. Having a group of people together, it makes people that generally wouldn't want to take the risk of going by themselves in the coup have all this support around them. So if they fall in, they're protected and, and brought to safety. Or, it, um, but as a way to get together and you know, show that you love the river and you think about the environment and so many things, it started. Uh, Gosh, I can't remember exactly when. I've been all, all but one one of the events. So our old canoe's been in I probably eight, maybe nine, ten times. I'm not sure exactly how many. And uh, every time we go, we're just so blessed to have such a beautiful experience. And, uh, you know, one of these years, if this dam goes through, you can't paddle down it anymore. It becomes a big lake. and it will be too dangerous to go to for many years. So I will never in my life uh, potentially won't ever be able to go back to that land because of the danger of sloughing or all the uh, different aspects of, of, of danger that uh, that can place upon it. This is one thing that actually made them join together because they, and maybe they will learn a little bit about um, treating people decently and understanding the impact of that. Um, they may be just sports people that like to hunt themselves, but they suddenly met these native people that love to do all that and are better at it than them and are have a history of you know many thousands of years of this beautiful flowing river. This area, if it didn't have the Peace River flowing, we wouldn't be able to produce what we do. Because it, it's a east-west valley, so it, it funnels warm air through us. If it was a north-facing valley, nothing would, you couldn't grow anything. Frost would kill everything. The old settlers that moved here, two, you know, hundreds of years back, they realized it, they came through, and those trained people that were on those canoe trips noticed this area and just were so impressed by its potential after they traveled through Rocky Mountains and all these places where no food could be. They came up and they looked upon this peace plateau which went out for miles, and they saw the game and the people and what it could be produced, and all they saw is the future. They saw it. This area has a huge potential for, for the, the rest of eternity. On the topic of the dam, it's just um, wrong in so many ways that uh, um, we can't put our heads around it. it. It just seems like it's totally insane. that there's so many options. There's solar, there's wind. Within 50 miles of here, there's two, 300, 400 uh, wind turbines that run right now. And in BC, we're one of the largest producers of wind energy. So we've already got two dams on that river existing already. We, a third one makes no sense. We must look into the future at all times now. We, we're, our population of the world, we're sitting at six billion, seven billion people. We really need to consider what we're doing with water and how we use it and how we generate power and our lives impact. Everything we do impacts this planet. Sadly, people have become the parasite of the, of the, of the world and we're killing our host. And in so many ways we're doing that and we have to stop.
the organic agriculture is the future of the of the entire world. So organically brings it more back into a a system that can support itself. It it can be closed. It can you're working with nature instead of against nature, and you're not demanding that your land uh, produces huge amounts. It may not, but Every year you make it better. To me it means a lot. My, I can eat, you know, good food. I can pick up something, anything I see, and if it's edible, I can eat it uh, without looking twice at it. You get to see the, the animals that live here and the insects and so many things are benefiting. I got uh, beehives that are healthy bees, not bees that are sick. I grow grain for flour, and uh, the people I feed appreciate it, and the trend is building, and more people are concerned about what they eat, so I see nothing but growth. And ever since I've been in it, it's, the organic industry has grown at 10, 15, 25 percent a year. I'm so happy suddenly over the last few years it has been become interested because when he was younger growing up his friends all had uh, you know many different things they did and when you're a kid you look at them and you want to be like your friends right you so dad's a farmer and they all make way more money and everything else and now he's grown and seen the lifestyle, he's seen the world and to an extent and seen very impoverished countries where food is so important to them and, and they have none. And uh, to see that up close and then to come here and say, wow, we live in paradise compared to those people. Instead of being poor, I'm rich because I have this to come back to. My uh, great-grandfather, he was the first white settler in this area. They actually named the Beaten River after him. So I do have a history. They, he was a Hudson Bay factor, and, uh, which means he managed uh, the Hudson Bay Post. And so he traded with all the native people for furs, and he traded them useful products, guns, everything they needed. And uh, he made a bond with them. He, he had a, a native wife, so the, I'm part indigenous myself. So I'm affected that way. I, I'm cousins to the people that are one day possibly flooded. <laughs>